Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. Now, as we know, Mazak are at the forefront of technology. So we're talking augmented reality, hybrid machines and automation. Prepare to be entertained and educated. Greg was stood in front of a BCN machine, it's a very popular model, can you tell us about the machine a bit please? Yeah, it's a, a BCN 530C, it's a UK built machine with a 530Y axis, this machine's 12,000 RPM spindle. And you can't help but notice the robot? Yeah, the robot's a universal uh, robot, it's a collaborative robot so it can work in the same space as an operator. And we know when you've got automation, we need a reliable process. How do you ensure you've got a reliable process in this case? Well, what we've done on this particular machine is we've worked with uh, artists, which is part of the Marpos group, and they've integrated their artist software onto the machine tool control. What does that mean? Is there more sensors on the machine? Is it intelligent? On this particular machine, we've actually integrated 12 separate sensors onto the machine. It's probably overkill for this process, but this is done to prove out the integration between Mazak and the artist hardware. In, in the past, we have sensors on machines, but arguably that data wasn't used. So you're collecting all this data, what you, what's happening with the data? Well, it's actually providing tool and process monitoring for the machine. So what we're doing is that every time the machine runs a cycle, it learns and it can set its own limits and then spot any change in that cycle and warn an operator that something's changed. So for example, a broken drill, an insert on a milling tool, if one of those breaks, the system can pick that up and alert an operator. So you don't come in the morning and find loads of scrap parts, I guess? That's absolutely right. Yeah, it can pick up that problem and then if we wanted, we could integrate that with sister tooling or do something else within the process to resolve the situation. So to conclude, Greg, artists, why should it be an option when you buy a machine? Well, Artis is able to identify process abnormalities so that we can immediately identify an operator if something's gone wrong in the process while it's running in an automated situation. Well, we need process reliability, so it sounds like a no-brainer for me. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. Les, I've just sat through a conference. What was it like to fly Concorde? Uh, it's an absolutely uh, incredible experience for the pilot as well as for the passengers. Uh, all passengers will tell you that there are two impressions of Concorde it are that A, that it's a lot smaller inside than they expect, and it, and it is, and secondly, the takeoff is quite dynamic, and, and yes, it is. And from the pilot's point of view, yep, uh, the takeoff was interesting, there's a lot going on, a lot of acceleration, a lot of noise, the zero, zero knots to 200 knots in about 30 seconds. And I don't know the last time you visited the manufacturing facility, but is it different to what's behind you? Oh, very, very. Uh, when I was going through test pilot training, we visited lots of aircraft manufacturing sites, uh, and obviously there's nothing like this. Uh, very, very manual, uh, very, very people intensive. Uh, this, is, this is a whole new world. Lawrence, the HCR 5000S. This is a new configuration, fifth axis machine, now available from Mazak that you're exhibiting at your open house. Can you tell me a little bit about this machine? Yeah, uh, it's our latest technology, five axis machine tool. 30,000 RPM, uh, HSK 63 spindle. Um, the, the key point with the machine is it's based on a, a horizontal platform. So it allows a very, a very good jerk rate, very effective acceleration. You combine that with the rotary axis configuration there, which gives very, very good access to the component, um, very high speed cutting, and it also lends itself to automation. So we can link it to our Palatech, we can have a two PC construction as well. Now going back to the spindle and having the spindle in a horizontal configuration, what other benefits do you get from this? Well you can use a shorter tool length in some instances, but really the, the framework is so rigid and so agile that it, it's combined with the construction of the, the rotary axes to give us those very high feed rates and rapid movements that we need for five axis aluminium machining. 
Lawrence, another highlight here this week has to be this twin turret, twin spindle machine. Um, why have Mazak suddenly, uh, let's say, relaunched this machine or started really promoting this type of technology? Twin turret, twin spindle machines have been with Mazak for years now. Um, but with the particular HQR machine that we see here, it's incredibly flexible. It can be used as a chucker, it can also be used as a bar working machine. We can run it with bar feeds as we are here today. We can equally use robotics to automate it. So it's incredibly flexible, but there is, an, there is a trend in the UK towards higher volume components now, you know, with the amount of automotive type applications we're being involved with. Yeah, I wanted to get the doors open to really, so the camera could actually see um, the construction of this machine because it, it's, it's quite big. I see a lot of twin turret machines that they, they try and reduce the footprint, they try and keep them uh, you know, as small as they can because floor space is a premium. But here, this is sort of the other end where you've just looked at making it heavier, making it weighty, making it big. Is, is that been the, the sort of plan? I think it's recognising that our subcontractors need flexibility. So, OK, they may be running on bar, and as I said previously, it's very suitable for chuck-type applications. So, if you look at the size of the turret, it's designed to clear the chuck, you know, in a very effective manner. So, you can use all, to all 12 tools over an 8 or 10-inch chuck and still have good clearance. Is that what we're talking I mean, that, again, yeah, the, the turrets look, look huge. I mean, this is a 10-inch on the front, is it, and an 8 on the back? An 8 on the back with a collet chuck on the front. So, that's, that's showing the versatility of the machine tool. Uh, and what you could feed through the bar feed here as well, what would, what would be the diameter of bar on this particular model? This particular model is 80 mil bar capacity, and it's got a similar capacity through the second spindle as well, so that you can, you can pass a component right through the machine. Now obviously, having two turrets and two spindles, those two turrets can be employed on either spindle, which means that you can use it in a balanced configuration, it can be used for cross machining and it can be used for simultaneous cutting. So it's incredibly flexible in terms of reducing cycle time. Uh, sometimes we look at the, the twin turret star machine as well and the second spindle is inferior to the main. Is this machine, could you kind of cut it down, down a, a line down there and, and do equal on that side as you could on the front? Yeah, they've got similar capacities in terms of torque, so the drive's the same through. In, in a similar way, the mill drive, there is no dedicated station, so you've got completely flexibility there across the turret. And with that in mind then, the y-axis on these machine, on the bottom and the top, are they, are they the same? Yes, they are. They're both 100 millimetres plus or minus 50, so it allows full flexibility. Uh, coming back to these turrets, I already said, pretty, pretty big. How much power do you offer milling-wise and how fast can the tools run? Yeah, we've got 5 kilowatt um, drive in terms of power and 6,000 RPM capability. Okay, and how does this, all this work with your smooth G control uh, here, Lawrence? Tell us about why, you know, the hardware we've spoken about that. What, what makes the software and these two talk to make them a best selection in your opinion? Well, as you know, we produce the machine and we also produce the control. So it's very much a linked up uh, pairing between control and machine. The software on the smooth control is designed to drive this machine so that we can effectively synchronize the turrets and the cutting processes in the way that we need to to optimize cycle time. So we've covered automation, but now we're talking additive manufacturing. And I'm standing in front of the Integrex I300SAM, standing for additive manufacturing. What's so good about this machine, Gio? Well, this is a, a true hybrid machine, Lindsay. Now, this is an Integrex, one of Mazak's best-selling products, a multitasking machine. So you've got twin spindle, milling capability, so you can produce components in one. But not only have you got all that technology that you have on the Integrex, you can also add material to the components as well. So, so say for example, you were doing a really expensive component, instead of that the wear, so maybe like a propeller for the aerospace industry, instead of having to remanufacture that component from scratch, you could add material and then remachine it, so kind of rework certain components. And as we've been saying a lot now recently, additive manufacturing is a part of the future. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm not the most technical person on this machine, but I know a man that is. Yeah, I think this is Chris as well. Um, thank you, Chris, sorry. Um, so Chris, you're in front of this machine. Talk to me about this in more of a technical fashion. What, what, what are people using this machine for? Well, because you've got the hybrid um, capabilities, obviously you want to make sure that you add in material and doing 50, 50% taken away. So certainly things when you want to do multi-material components such as um, 
lining shafts, things like that, adding your expensive uh, materials like your ink canals, tungsten carbides, things like that, and then you can machine them within situ. So it means that it's less operations all done in one machine. Uh, we've got two machines we've purchased from Mazak. We're just running the factory tests before we ship them to Derby, make sure there's no problems with them. So you've purchased the two machines. What were your, were your reasons behind these purchases? Um, they met what spec we, we required and they also the value, the value for money. So with the specification, t talk me through the process that you've gone through with Mazak. You know, who have you met? What applications have you had to discuss? How easy has it been? Okay, we, we wrote the spec out, which we agreed between stakeholders at work. And then we spoke to Tony Creamer, the sales person, and then uh, he gave us a design. And we met at uh, Mac exhibition last year, looked at machines again, and then from there we, we chose the machine we wanted. In so many swarf and chips, we're now talking about automation and coming to an event like this, when the big manufacturers are providing lots of types of automation, well, we've got to show it to you, haven't we? So, Joe, what, what are we talking about here? Well, you're absolutely right. We talk about automation a lot, but people are actually using it now, whereas maybe five years ago, we talked about it a lot, but there was very little adoption. What we see here is uh, an integrated robo job on the quick turn machine. This is for uh, loading large billets, not necessarily large volume, preferably high repetition, but it doesn't really matter. But large billets, or as I say, billeted by a saw, loaded into the machine, taken out without operator intervention. Very, very straightforward, no real programming. And, and what, uh, what, who's going to need these types of machines? Any engineer, in my opinion. There's no reason not to automate. People say, I don't have volumes. I think those days are gone. These robots lend themselves to quite small volumes. Yeah, because it's not just volumes, is it? It's also unique parts that they can create. Exactly. I, I think the money is um, high repetition of low volume, so 5, 10, even 15 off, certainly less than 50. You don't need hundreds or even thousands of parts anymore. Yeah. But okay. if we can see this What are we talking here, about here? This, again, is another collaborative robot. So this, you don't program it traditionally. It's what they call a teach mode. So you physically drive the robot in place and teach it and the robot will get the component from point A to point B in the fastest time. When you mean teach it, what do you mean? Exactly that. So if you imagine programming a CNC or a robot, big lines of code, you don't need to do that. It does it for you. So you just you would say what gripper you're using and you and you would program it to go from point A to point B. Not program, so you'd teach it. So you would drive it using the pendant into the uh, chuck in this instance. And then it would, it would write the code for you. You don't really do it. Joe, what's the reason for the, you know, we've got two sides. The, the last robot we saw was considerably larger. Yeah. So why do you need such a large robot? Well, it, it's fair to say the, the main advantage is payload. So the, the weight of the component, you can see here, these are much smaller components to what we saw on the previous machine. So it's kind of, what do you want? It's worth noting both of these robots come in different sizes, larger and smaller. Uh, both can be used on a lathe or a mill or pretty much anything with a with an nc controller so you've kind of got to have a feel for the type of work you do now the robot we're about to see is smaller again yeah, this one's different this one looks entirely different because it's almost on a table itself and so we've walked in on the red line so this is now gone into i think actually for the this show it is always in collaborative mode but talk me through this yeah, again, so because we're at a show, it's slightly different. If we, if we were to be outside of the red zone, this would be considerably quicker. Um, but what the robot's doing here, actually, you can see these components here, you can put at any orientation, and the robot, using the vision system, will be able to pick it up using suction and then load the component. Using suction, but um, so here, there's a gripper as well, though. It, oh, there we go. So there's a gripper and suction. So what's the difference? Yeah, so the sucker picks it up and puts it into a loading station. This robot now is going to go and pick it up to put it into the machine tool because obviously when you load a machine tool, there needs to be some uh, a, a decent and level of yeah decent level of accuracy as well. So this will be to put it in, in, in the correct orientation and that will load. The, the other thing to note with robotics, people will often say they look slow, they look cumbersome, but nine times out of ten the machine tool is actually running. So why rush this bit? You know why put why put pressure onto the robot when the machine tool is running? You know, take your time, get it all ready. Of course, when the door's open, let's get the component in and out in a timely manner. But sometimes you don't need speed. Does it always choose the top part as yeah. well? Yeah, I believe it does. Always goes for the top part, it, it, exactly that. And it can be in any fashion. So it, And it's because it's vision yeah. system, so it can be any angle as well. Cl clever, isn't it? Yeah, very. The VTC 760C is one of Mazak's best-selling machines. 
Now, it's got the central partition and the travelling column, but tell me a little bit more about this product. Yeah, as you said, it is one of Mazak's best-selling machines. Um, it's got the uh, travelling column, uh, also um, enclosed cover here. Um, it's a very flexible machine. We can have work pieces up to four metres long on, on the table, um, or we can put the centre partition and operate the machine in the pendulum machining, so two independent machines. We've got a uh, rotary table here, which again um, we can take off if we need to do that. It's easy to remove to give us the flexibility that, that this machine offers. What are the benefits of having a travelling column? Um, well, one of the key benefits is the, the weight of the component that you can put on the machine. Um, if you can imagine if it was a moving um, table, then you're restricted on the weight of the component that you can have on there. Also, you can have multiple parts set up on the table quite easily there. So it's a very flexible machine. You can have a large component that covers the old machine bed, or you can put the central partition in, use it as two separate machines, and you can multi-load. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, it gives us it gives the customer a lot of flexibility and what they what they want to use the machine for. Yeah. You're also offering the customer flexibility in regards to the programming language. Now, this particular free axis machine comes with a Siemens control. Now, why are you offering Siemens? Yeah, um, the reason why we're offering Siemens is that we, we realise, you know, um, Siemens has a very big market share in, in, in Europe and globally, but um, so we want to um, give Mazak, um, or give customers the opportunity to buy Mazak machine with a control system, Siemens control system that they would be familiar with. So we're looking for uh, new, new, new business for us. That's the main reason. Do you lose any functionality of the machine tool using Siemens? No, absolutely not. Um, we've spent a lot of time developing, uh, integrating the Siemens control onto the Mazak machine. Um, we want to make sure that the, the, the Siemens control functions as a Siemens user would expect. So we've spent a lot of time developing, testing, working closely with Siemens to make sure we provide that experience. So effectively, you're offering your customers what they want. So if they wanted a Mazak machine, but they wanted it with Siemens, you can now offer that. Yeah, precisely that. You know, we realise, um, as I said before, Siemens is a very popular control in the marketplace. Um, so we, we want to be able to give um, customers the opportunity to have the Mazak quality with the Siemens control system. Can you tell me any of the unique benefits of this particular software? Yeah, what we've got here, this is the Cinemeric 828D, so the latest 828D control from Siemens. It comes with the 15.6 inch color multi-touch screen and it runs the Cinemeric Operate HMI together with the Siemens Conversational Shop Mill programming. So it's very intuitive, easy to use um, experience for the customers. So I've just found Kevin over here and as Mazak are always at the forefront of technology. Kevin, it looks like you're playing a game. What, what is it that you're doing over in this corner? Well, hi Lindsay. What we're doing here, this is a, an augmented reality uh, headset. Okay. So we were recently involved in a 5G project that the government sponsored to look at the technology of 5G and what industry might use it for. Mazak used a use case which is these headsets. Now this headset is a live streaming what uh, the wearer can see to an expert that can help him to try to solve problems such as field engineer problems. Oh, so if you've got a problem with your machine or anything like that, instead of getting an engineer to come out from here, you're wearing this and you're speaking to an engineer directly to Worcester. Initially what we're going to do is to prototype these out with service engineers. Our UK service engineer will take a headset with him. He will try to solve a problem uh, that a customer has. If he needs some expert help, he can make a call to a bunch of experts here at Worcester who can augment his vision of the live streaming and help him to resolve some problems. And that's what we're demoing here today at the Open House. I'm here with Martin Page from Hydrafeed. Martin, we've been talking about evolution and how everything's changed about the machines, but you're, you work alongside Mazak, don't you? We do. We work alongside Mazak and have done for 20 years or more now. Um, originally, the bar feeds that we supplied were an electro-pneumatic version, but has, as the Mazak machines evolved into their twin spindle, more uh, intricate types of uh, metal cutting, then we had to evolve our peripheral equipment to complement those machines, which is fundamentally where we are now with our MSV range. So I'm here with Martin. Um, now, you've been working alongside Mazak, haven't you, with some of your tools? Yeah, we've recently done some development work with them, 
just on specific applications where they've been struggling to achieve surface finish for their customer. Right, and you have got an invention and a development because I was speaking with your colleagues the other day on Swarf. So uh, just quickly go through this piece so, if you don't mind. Yeah, so this product is the Universal Diamond Burnishing Tool developed for subcontract machinists mainly just so it's got a lot more flexibility, can cover a larger range of components and applications and gives them a better chance to justify the rate of return on the investment. We know Mazak provide premium machines, but we also need those premium tool holders. And this is where Phil from Hymer comes into it. So uh, what have we got here, Phil? Well, this is our power clamp uh, uh, premium machine, which is a 4.0 ready machine, which kind of works with the philosophy that Mazak also have on connectivity and the factory of the future. And because you've got this facility here, but you've also got other products in this facility too, don't you? Yeah, we have the tool presetter um, over behind us and also the tool balancing machine down in the uh, engineering center. All helping Mazak to provide a complete solution. Yeah, we provide quality tool holders to Mazak and in turn they can provide the whole solution to their customer. Alan, they've kept me off camera a lot today. In fact, I've only spoken to Lawrence, had one interview, but I'm glad to be talking to you uh, now here at the event. Um, let's talk about the relevance of us standing in front of this VTC machine here, because uh, it's pretty good news, isn't it? It is, yeah. The VTC really embodies the success that Mazak's had, uh, not just in the UK, but across Europe. Um, it's a platform which was designed in the UK, developed in the UK, and is manufactured in the UK, um, selling over a thousand units since its launch. Um, and is now available in many guises and that really reflects the flexibility of the model. Yeah, why is it popular? Is it down to the flexibility? I mean, you can do your pendulum machine in here, five axis one side, you know, large bolsters the other like we're showing off. Yeah, the, the fixed table design really allows you to configure the front end to suit your application requirements. So from the, the three axis variant, the 820, uh, available in both 40 taper and 50 taper, and then the 800 series, which is available in SR, which is the five axis version you see behind me, SLR with the large rotary table, one and a half meter swing, or the SDR, which has been phenomenally successful, especially in the aerospace sector and automotive sector uh, for vo high volume five axis applications, where we want Swarf to be dropping straight down into the Swarf conveyor and by removing the table. So it's a hugely flexible platform and that reflects its success. Well, now it only seems to me like a few months since I was last here at your uh, previous event and actually when I thought about it it was only a few months because we're now here in June why have this uh, event in the middle of the year when you normally focus on one towards the latter part or in the last quarter? I, I think it's important for us to demonstrate the productivity gains that our technology and those of our partners can give to UK manufacturing and clearly UK manufacturing is in a, in a uh, position currently where productivity is so important to us being competitive longer term. So normally we'd have the one show at the end of the year towards this year, the Emo Encore event, but we felt it was important to have an event now in June before the holidays start to kick in where we could demonstrate the technologies we can offer, our partners can offer for both tooling, fixturing, CAD CAM software um, to, to make sure that the community in the UK is embracing the latest available productivity gains. And a, and a big message I see here, certainly when you first enter uh, the showroom facility is the automation. You have three machines there lined up with the Cobot, um, you've got the, the, the FANUC um, optical solution as well, vision system solution. This is a big message from you and we're hearing it from a lot, isn't it? We need to automate in order to remain competitive. We do, yeah. The productivity gap is no secret in the UK and obviously employing automation at various levels across the industry is critical from the automation you're seeing with the Cobot through to the TA20, TA12 series, through to the automation we're employing in our own factories now to deliver those lights out capability that's so important to delivering us a competitive product to the UK, European and global marketplace. And what is good about coming um, to your facility, Alan, to your company here, the HQ, the European HQ, is the diversity of the range of machines, every, everything from additive manufacturing uh, to your, your laser cutting machines as well, five axis, as we've spoken about. Um, could you maybe just whet the appetite of engineers that aren't going to come this week, but could maybe come in November to Emo Encore as to what they can see in addition to what I've just said? Yeah, clearly I can't divulge any, any uh, new products that we're going to be launching there, but clearly to say it's building on those key themes of automation, of improved performance of, of machine tools, um, value, clearly value is important, especially in the five axis environment. Um, and obviously the, the factory management software, the iSmart factory, is, is, a, is a, a facility which we're continuing to develop, not just for our customers' use, but for our own use as well. So Emo will really build on the themes that we've had as a bedrock for many, many years, 
and deliver more and more success to us as a factory user and to our customers as they use the products themselves. So really Emo is a, is a focal point for us. The Emo Encore is one not to be missed. Thank you for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. Now we're going to talk about one thing that we can take away that we've learned and we're not talking food, Joe. So Paul, what's yours? I like that one, that's a good start. Um, I mean, lots of technology as you would always expect to see here, but I think for me the VTC range in talking to Alan as you would have seen, the fact that those machines are designed here in the UK, they're built in the UK uh, and it's a popular machine, it's, it's testament to the capabilities of Mazak here and I think that really really impressed me because I didn't know that. Yeah I was impressed by the augmented reality and how it's not just a vision and a camera now so logistic wise they can actually teach people and show them exactly what is wrong with the machine as well. For me, it was the uh, Integrex additive manufacturing machine. I think that the Integrex as, it, as, a, as a product that they offer is fantastic for machining uh, any component all in one, but to add additive manufacturing to already um, an outstanding product is really yeah. amazing. And the coatings as well. Special coatings and, and kind of reworks. There's so many different applications now, it really opens up new markets. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Joe. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> for me, it, it's quite simple. We talk a lot about Industry 4. For me, it's actually industry three, it's automation. Today we're seeing probably four different types of automation, some from Mazax, some third party. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's about getting that billet from point A to point B in a timely fashion without operator intervention. So for me, automation. A great day all round. So thank you for watching this week's Wolf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. Okay.